Greetings and welcome to a new video. We continue with the subject of DC machines. And in this video, we start with the first example of a DC series motor. So let's look at our example. We have a DC series motor and it requires a terminal voltage of 280 volts. In addition, we know that the field resistance is 240 milliohms. What we also know is a condition for full load and also the no load. For full load, we know the terminal current, 36 amperes, the speed of the motor, 640 RPM, and also the back EMF is given 236 volts. And for no load condition, we only know the current, which is 1.2 amperes. You can see the current decreases a lot compared to the full load. In no load condition, we have this much current. What we like to calculate is the armature resistor of this DC series motor and also the no load speed. So the speed of the motor at no load condition. Okay, let's look at our solutions. Of course, we start with the model. In this case, we have a series motor, so DC series model. The circuit equivalent of that is given here. We have here the terminal voltage applied to it, DC voltage. This part is the field circuit and this part is the armature circuit and we can see that this is now in series and that's why it's called a DC series motor. Now what you also know is that the current, the terminal current, will be equal to the field current and also equal to the armature current. So there is no difference in this case in the currents compared to the shunt DC motor where we do have a difference between the field and also the armature current. That means in series condition the three currents are equal to each other. Okay. Let's first start with the armature resistor, R sub A. Now, at full load condition, we can say now the following situation. F using Kirchhoff voltage law, we can say that this voltage across the terminal will be then equal to the back EMF plus the volts across the RA, volts across this inductor, volts across this inductor LF, and also volts across this RF. So, we have actually five elements in it. You can see all that also in the right hand side of this equation. But we know that we have a DC source. So there will be also a DC current flowing in here. That means the reactances of the two inductors will be zero. That means this will go and this will also go. So we only have three terms in the right hand, right hand side of this equation. Then we can set actually a little bit simpler equation here that means the terminal voltage will be then the back EMF plus the armature current times the summation of these two resistors. Now why armature current? Because we have also the field current here. Now we already said that the field current is equal to the armature current so we can use just one of these and you can calculate the rest of the values. All right. So we can now move on. We can say the terminal or the armature current doesn't matter is 36 amperes so we can just type in fill in here 36 the back emf is given for this condition and also the terminal voltage we have here 280 volts now we don't know what ra is but we do know what rf is which is then 0 0.240 ohms so if you just work this out you will get 0 0.982 ohms very close to that value that is the answer to question a okay in addition we also require another parameter which is the motor constant that will be useful later on in question b so this is the relationship which relates the back emf to the rotation speed of the motor using the motor constant which is then given by this symbol now we know that we have the motor speed in this case for the full load condition in RPM, so we need to convert that. So we need to use this, that's the 640, and we need to make that to the correct unit. So it will be then 67 radians per second. Now, if I now substitute it in here, and I use the full load back EMF, I will then get the motor constant. That will be then 3.52 Webers. This is then also useful later on in another condition. So that's why we calculate it right now. Okay, let's move to question B. That's the no load speed of the motor, which is then given by this symbol, omega sub m, 
and then no load for NL. All right, no load condition. Again, we can set up the Kirchhoff voltage law here using the terminal voltage and the five elements in here, exact same equation. And again, we lose these two uh, parts due to that reactance of the inductors, which will be zero at DC. And again, we have a simplified form. In addition, we don't know yet what the back EMF is in the no load condition when the information for that is not given. So we can set up the equation. We already know what the armature resistance is, that, that, is, that will not change. So field resistance was already given, armature resistor also given, calculated. So we can just substitute the values and also the 1.2 for the terminal current or the armature current. So this is the unknown, so, but that can be now calculated and that will be then 278.5 volts. You can see it increases from 236 to 278.5 volts when you go from full load to no load. Okay, what we like to calculate is of course the speed and the speed is again related here in this formula. Again, we can say this is the no load back EMF and then we can say this is always the case no matter if you have a load full load or no load that doesn't matter so we can again use our motor constant of 3.52 Weber's that remains the same then we have the following situation if I want to calculate the rotation speed for no load condition I use the back EMF of my no load condition and also the motor constant just getting the values from here and substitute it in this equation. I will have then 79.1 radians per second. That's the condition now what we have here. And if I now convert that to RPM, I will get 756 RPM. And this will be then our no load speed. So we know the full load speed and we now also know the no load speed. And that's actually the answer for question B. Now, if I now compare the speed that goes from 640 RPM to 756 RPM if I go from full load to no load. So by making the no load condition, you increase your speed of your motor. That's actually logical because when you apply a load to your system, that will of course slow down your rotation speed. So by no load condition, you have actually the maximum possible rotation speed and that's also shown here. So this is actually the maximum possible rotation speed you can get for this configuration. All right, that was for example number one about a DC series motor. We will of course continue with different example illustrating other variables and other concepts. If you have any questions about this exercise, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time and take care.